What I have on the table here are three phones from the Galaxy S24 series. So we got the base version, the plus and also the ultra, obviously. And in today's video, we are not going to talk about these two first because that video will come later, gaming test at least. And uh, I'm actually more excited about these two phones because they are running the Exynos 2400 chipset. And there's not much detail about this chipset. So I'll leave this aside first. Uh, actually, the S24 Plus is here. The S24 is currently doing its battery charging test. So what I'm going to do is to talk about the S24 Ultra's gaming capabilities in this video only. And uh, this is going to be interesting as well because the Galaxy S24 Ultra got 1.9 times larger vapor chamber compared to the S23 Ultra. And it is also running the Snapdragon 8 Gen 3, which is the same as this one, the ROG Phone 8 Pro, which also has the same performance as the ROG Phone 8 non-pro version. Uh, if you want to watch the gaming test of this phone, then click at the top right corner here. I'll also leave the link down in the description below so you can watch that. And let's just proceed with the gaming test of the new S24 Ultra. So what we're going to do is, in typical Samsung fashion, we have to do quite a lot of steps. We head into Gaming Hub, press More, Game Booster. Then go near the bottom, click on Labs. And then enable Alternate Game Performance Management Mode. As we can see here, this will unlock the full thermal headroom of this chipset for this phone so it can go beyond what's the recommended performance. Technically, it's just uncapped performance. We'll go with that. And then, uh, as we can see here, pause USB PD charging when gaming. This is the bypass charging feature. It is finally available by default, so we can just plug in a USB PD PPS charger, 25 watts and up to the phone, and then we can finally just use it. We don't have to perform any rituals anymore like last year's S23 Ultra. And time really flies, right? It's already a year since I discovered the bypass charging feature. The next thing we have to do is to head into settings menu here. Go all the way down, tap on about phone, software, and then tap on build number. It says I am already in developer mode. You have to enable developer mode. So go into developer options, go somewhere near the bottom and enable GPU watch. This is a fantastic feature. And these are the graphs that will be displayed. So we have FPS, the CPU and GPU load, and also this one is very important, the render resolution of the game. So as you know, I said that the ROG Phone 8 Pro has pretty good performance overall, but we don't know what's the render resolution. In Samsung's case, we can actually see it happening. And the last step is to head into the Galaxy Store and also install the game plugins. I already searched it here. Uh, you should install this one, game plugins. And once it is installed, we have to install one more thing within this plugin, which is the Game Booster Plus. Once we enable it, we hit OK, go into the setting, skip all of these animations. And here we can do something that other phones just don't allow us to do, which is to head to this menu here. Then from here, we can go into custom mode. It's already in custom mode. So performance, focus on performance. And here we can select the graphics quality. This is the render resolution. So for me, I'm going to enable graphics quality all the way to the maximum. Frame Booster, as far as I know, this feature wouldn't work on some games and would it potentially might cause issue, so I will disable it. And then hit apply, apply to all games, change. And now all of the games will be running at the native render resolution. And just to show you one more thing here, display screen resolution. By default, this phone will go into FHD plus mode, but I have manually changed it to QHD plus, which is the native resolution of 3120 by 1440 pixels. And it is also at the adaptive refresh rate. I can't find the option. Where is the refresh rate? Ah, here it is, motion smoothness, so 120 hertz. And now we can finally head into Genshin Impact after doing all of those prep tests. Technically, you don't have to do all of those steps. It's just that for me personally, I want to stress this phone to its maximum potential. So I have to do all of those steps. Okay. So as we can see here, once we're in the game, the render resolution is at 1872 by 864 pixels, which is I think the same as the S23 Ultra from last year. 
I can't remember but I think the number is around there and I am also playing it at the highest possible graphical settings so I will just show you here as we can see everything at the absolute highest 60 fps and there we go we should just do some things right we should spend our resin now let's see how fast I can kill this boss now let's see how fast I can defeat this boss because I need some material for one of the characters That's a clean run. Go another domain while we are waiting for this boss to respawn. So I'm just gonna go to this one. Technically not my best team for this domain but uh, I just like playing Ayaka a while. Oh god I messed up my rotation. Thank you. There we go, not the best rotation, still finish in about a minute. While we're waiting for the boss to respawn, let's just walk around. Oh god. So as we can see the frame rate can reach somewhere around 50 fps while we are gliding somewhere near the, the flowers. I'm not sure why this view in particular is quite taxing. So yeah this is about 50, 50 ish, 51, 54 but uh, it's kind of funny because the ROG Phone 8 Pro and the ROG Phone 8 as I mentioned, the render resolution of this phone is unknown but I can see that this phone's gaming performance in Genshin Impact is just not as sharp as this phone. And I presume the ROG Phone 8 has a lower resolution than this value here. So that means Samsung technically pushes it to a higher limit as in the Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 on Genshin Impact and that is why we are seeing below 60fps frame rate. Oh sh this thing is tanky. I shouldn't have used that. But anyway, the gameplay is very smooth. There's no sudden extreme frame drops or stutters. So overall, still very enjoyable experience and also a much sharper image. 
It's just that if I'm going to play it at the native render resolution of this value here, 1872 by 864, then I won't get 60 FPS consistently. I will still get it sometimes, but not all the time. Eh, he missed. Huh, and the performance dropped even more now. We are only at about 42-40ish FPS. Maybe it has thermal throttled? I don't know because it does feel quite warm at the back here. We will continue to monitor a bit more. Huh, so this scene is gonna be even lower in terms of frame rate. Oh, there's a frame drop there. I'm not sure if that's due to thermal throttle or what, because the phone definitely feels warm behind there. But uh, I can't confirm if it is thermal throttling. Let's just let's just monitor it a bit more. And we're back to this boss. Wrong button. I hate this boss so much. Hmm, the frame rate is definitely not consistent. We were seeing 50 something average just now, but now we're only getting about 40 something average. And now it's jumping all over the place. Kind of reminds me of thermal throttling, I'm not quite sure. I can't confirm it more like. Because as far as I know, the Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 on the ROG Phone 8 can reach 60 degrees on surface which is extremely extremely hot but that is during synthetic benchmarks uh, i'm not sure if we're gonna push the chipset to such a high limit it will thermal throttle on the ROG phone 8 because we cannot increase the render resolution on any other phones except samsung <laughs> today is a lucky day illusion shattered off we go Thank you. 
So yes, I think Thermal Throttle has happened and we're getting somewhere 40, 40 something FPS, which is okay. Uh, I mean, we don't have an apples to apples comparison since we are pushing it to this render resolution. And uh, you know what? I think it is time for me to take the temperature since I've been playing for like 20 minutes. I think more than 20 minutes, 25, nearly half an hour. So let's just take the temperature right now. Uh, yeah, I think it has the more throttle because the FPS is increasing once more. Because when thermal throttling happens, this FPS will drop when it gets too hot. So the FPS drops just to cool down the device a bit. But once it is cooled down enough, then the performance will spike up once more. And that is why our FPS will increase again. And then when it gets too hot, it will cool down again. So the cycle keeps on repeating like a sine wave. And that is thermal throttling. Uh, the phone definitely feels a bit hot, so you know what, we'll take the temperature right now. So the front bottom here is about 38, 39 degrees Celsius, that's where my hand is supposed to be, so it's gonna be a bit warm. Then the middle part here is at around the 41, oh I saw a 41, so we are getting about 40 degrees Celsius, I think somewhere around 40, 41 degrees Celsius, that would be a safe bet. Surprisingly, the hottest part is somewhere around the middle all the way to the top of the phone, which is at around 40, 41 degrees Celsius. I think this is where the vapor chamber is located, as in this part here, which is why if we look, it, look at it with our thermal camera, it's at about the same temperature throughout this entire part. So yeah, the vapor chamber is literally covering to somewhere around here, as in this part onwards is the vapor chamber, because around this part here, temperature is equal so let's take the temperature of the back of the phone right now i can definitely tell that the frame of the phone is very warm though so around this part here is going to be the hottest so we can see 41 something degrees celsius not the hottest but it can go higher and then somewhere around the middle part here 40 degrees celsius actually 39 point something and the bottom here is at about 34, 35 degrees Celsius, which is interesting. And now, uh, one limitation of our thermal camera, we cannot actually take the temperature of the frame, but I will try because the frame definitely feels warm. Inactivity serves no purpose whatsoever. Hmm. Yeah, the resolution of our thermal cam is just not high enough to take the temperature of the frame of the phone. But anyway, I think it is safe to say that this phone did indeed thermal throttle because we cannot get consistent FPS throughout the gameplay. So now we are idling, we're getting somewhere around 50 something FPS. Uh, if we move around some more, it will drop to about 40 something. So, yeah. So I think we had enough of Genshin Impact on the Galaxy S24 Ultra. Remember, we are pushing this chipset as far as we can go with maximum render resolution, which is higher than the ROG Phone 8 Pro's render resolution. Do keep that in mind because that is going to impact the performance a lot. So as we can see, even though we unlock the maximum potential of this Snapdragon 8 Gen 3, we cannot reach consistent frame rate. I'm not even speaking of consistent 60fps, just consistent enough to not fluctuate that much. But uh, yeah, I think it did thermal throttle. We get somewhere around 40 something fps, and sometimes when it's cool enough, we can go somewhere around 50 something fps. So yeah, that's the conclusion for Genshin Impact. So now let's just go to the next game, which is PUBG Mobile. So for PUBG Mobile, I'm not gonna do much here because this game is very, 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 very unoptimized. So we can see we do have 90 FPS option on smooth graphical settings, which is the absolute lowest. Anything higher will just go to 60 FPS, which is very sad. I think they should have just given us 90 FPS option for everything because Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 is not gonna be an issue anyway. And the render resolution of this game is only at 720p, which is pathetic. So, 
I'm just gonna say it here. This phone is gonna run this game at 60, no, 90 FPS consistently with zero issues at all. Seriously though, no guns. Oh, I can't even get up. As expected, PUBG Mobile not gonna be an issue at all. 90 FPS consistent throughout the entire gameplay. Again, this game is badly optimized. So I don't know why this game is so famous, but there you go. Here's the gaming performance because you guys always ask me for it. And here you go. 90 FPS, no issues at all. I mean, if we can get like the highest graphical settings at 120 fps maybe that will stress the 8 gen 3 chipset but as of now yeah that, that's not happening because uh, cpu gpu utilization below 50 percent all of the time so we can still push it quite a lot more and uh, i think we should move on to the next game which is uh, pubg new state which is much more optimized than this so for pubg new state what we can do here is quite a lot of things actually so if we go to graphics we can see 90 fps ultra graphical quality we still don't have extreme don't know why uh hd textures and these are all of the settings that i'm using vulcan api it should be faster than opengl but it might cause some issues we will take a look at that later so now let's just hop into a game so the maximum render resolution of this game is at 1488 by 688 an even weirder value, even less than PUBG Mobile, but uh, yeah, this game does allow us to upscale the graphical fidelity in cost of the render resolution. So that's that.
Since when all of my buttons are so squished up? Yeah, 90 FPS, consistent, no issues at all. So, okay, let's jump to the next game. And uh, it's time for COD Mobile. And on the Galaxy S23 Ultra, I think it's the S23 Ultra, I realized that they added the new option called Super Resolution, which is definitely gonna bump up the render resolution to its native, 3120 by 1440 pixels. And that is actually the resolution of the screen. So let's see what happens when we play this game at such a high render resolution. Just to show you what kind of graphical settings we're using, uh, we cannot go very high at the ultra frame rate, but uh, if we tap on ultra, it will drop to the medium graphical quality. So we we'll use this because I like frame rates. And in multiplayer, it will be 120, Battle Royale and Undead Siege is at 90 FPS, okay. And these are all of the settings I'm using. I'm turning this off because I don't want dynamic frame rate. And then, if you scroll lower, these are all of the settings that I'm using. The song of this game is horrible, so I'm just gonna close the speaker. And as you can see, the super resolution is turned on right now. And the resolution is at 3120 by 1440 pixels, which is the native resolution of this phone. If we turn it off, you can see it just drops to 720p. So, I'm gonna turn this on because I really want to stress up the Snapdragon 8 Gen 3. So now let's jump into a game of multiplayer. Wow, this game looks fantastic on this phone. That resolution is really sharp. Hot oh, damn, I didn't expect this. Oh. What? And we're still getting 120 FPS. What the heck? This phone is amazing for COD Mobile. Hardpoint 
That was an amazing experience. The game is so sharp. The frame rate is so consistent at 120 FPS. I, I just really like COD Mobile on this phone. High resolution screen, high refresh rate, high graphical fidelity somewhat. Now for Mobile Legends though, this is uh, a bit weird. So as you can see here, we do have high frame rate, but the Ultra here is grayed out, but it is selected. If I'm gonna select high, then I cannot go back to Ultra. Uh, so I'm not sure what's the graphical <laughs> settings that we're in right now, but uh, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna take any chances. So so technically we're gonna get 60 FPS at I don't know if this is high or ultra graphical <laughs> settings, but uh, you know what? Let, let's just jump into a game real quick uh, just to show you that it does run at 60 FPS. One thing I do have to highlight though is that the render resolution is quite high, 2808 by 1296. That's surprising. Aha! Greed doesn't do you any good. Yeah, 60 FPS, no problems at all for Mobile Legends on this phone. I mean, what to expect, right? I mean, not a surprise, right? This game isn't that demanding to begin with, so yeah. And yeah, that's all we have to share with you about Mobile Legends. Literally 60 FPS, no issues. Even though the render resolution is quite high, so uh, we are actually using less than 50% of CPU and GPU utilization once more. So we can push this game to a to an even higher graphical fidelity if we want to. So let let's just jump to another game after defeating this guy. Why did you return? You're gonna die. Oh, yep. Okay, let's jump to the next game then. So for the second last game, I'm gonna try Fortnite because a lot of you guys are gonna ask me about Fortnite, so might as well include here, right? So for Fortnite, what we have is a pretty simple list of graphical quality. It's practically the same issue as the ROG Phone 8. So you see, if we go all the way to 90 FPS, 
then it will show me that message and then it will jump to high quality preset if i go epic though it will drop back to 60 which is not what i want i want 90 fps so i just proceed with this and these are all of the graphical settings that i'm using so let's just jump into a game we should save this double check once more 90 fps high quality preset oh render resolution should be at 100 and then apply so the render resolution is rather weird 1536 by 712 pixels so uh, i think this is the highest render resolution for fortnite on android so we don't have any choice but to use this Hmm, the frame rate is jumping quite a lot from about 70 something to about 80 something, 90. Uh, let's just land and see what's the resolution because I think uh, an aerial view means that many things need to get rendered so it does affect the frame rate. There's someone there, I don't want to go there. How do I go down faster? Okay, I just defeated someone using the, the, the sh pickaxe shovel, I don't know. Uh, I don't have a gun, so I just took his gun, so... Okay. That was an intense battle. Okay, so at this render resolution, the f game can go about 90 FPS, but we can see it's not really that consistent, it's jumping around 80 something, 90. Um, I don't know what's happening because the CPU and GPU utilization is still below 80% so I think if they want to push it, they can. Uh, yeah, we're getting 80, yeah I saw 87. Not really that consistent but it is good enough I would say. The phone is not warm so thermal throttling is definitely not happening. Yep, a lot colder than when I was testing with Genshin Impact, so there's that. The auto-aim on this game is just insane, man. It's like playing easy mode. I wonder what's the logic behind the physics of sliding upwards. I mean, you can do it, but how? You need a lot of force, a lot of momentum to slide upstairs. Up, up the slope, not upstairs. But you can slide up down. That, that's physically accurate. You're just sliding upstairs. That doesn't make sense at all. Wow, I can... Okay, I can get up the train by doing that. So what's on the train? I actually have to wait for the box to open? What? Okay, that was a lot of loot. And that's it. I think I can just jump off the train, right? Jump. Bye. So yeah, Fortnite, I can't get 90 FPS consistently, but uh, CPU and G GPU utilization is definitely not as high as I would expect it to be. And uh, the phone isn't thermal throttling, it's not warm. So I'm not sure what's happening. Maybe it's a game issue. Uh, not too sure. And the render resolution isn't exactly high as well. So yeah, I'm just not sure what's happening. War Thunder and War Thunder is interesting because this game has ray tracing on the Android version and you can literally download it from the Google Play Store. Huh. 
Huh, it just doesn't load. Maybe I need to lower the render resolution of War Thunder because uh, certain games are a bit weird. So I will turn off custom mode. I will just go for high quality, whatever. Uh, I just only want to apply to War Thunder. So let's just jump back into the game. Still nothing. I will disable Game Booster Plus entirely and then test War Thunder. Huh. You know what? This is interesting. War Thunder doesn't work when the this this toolbar, the what's that called again? The GPU Z is enabled. GPU watch. So you know what I have to do? I have to disable this, which is unfortunate. Yeah, this way works. I don't know why why War Thunder just doesn't let us enable GPU Watch. So for War Thunder, we do have a very basic graphical settings. So graphical quality, FPS limit, and also ray tracing. Unfortunately, we cannot monitor the frame rate, CPU, GPU utilization, or the render resolution, which is unfortunate. But we'll still jump into a game to see how things go. For this game in particular, the ROG Phone 8 can run it at about 60 FPS. So I'm not sure what kind of frame rate this Galaxy S24 Ultra can bring. I can tell you one thing though, I really hate the tank control in this game because they're trying to go for the realistic controls and it's just not that fun. But the reason why I'm testing this game is for ray tracing. Honestly speaking though, ray tracing or not, uh, doesn't really make much of a difference to me because this game, I think it underutilizes the ray tracing. Uh, as of now, only the tank looks better, especially the shadows. Uh, everything else, especially the terrain texture, the uh, building texture, grass texture, tree texture, they don't look particularly good. Are you stuck or what? Bye. I mean, it's smooth enough. It's definitely higher than 40 something FPS. I'm not quite sure what's the frame rate, but definitely smooth. Let's get to the point. Oh, there's someone there. Yo, that tank is speed running. Damn, one shot, one kill. Ah, I missed. I mean, the game is definitely smooth. No complaints overall in terms of the frame rate. Uh, again, no idea what's the render resolution, FPS, CPU, GPU, utilization, all of those. Oh, we do have FPS. 53. 54. Not bad. It's slightly lower than ROGs about 10 fps lower i think somewhere around there but uh the render resolution is supposedly higher on the s24 ultra so i guess that checks out well victory uh so yeah the frame rate is somewhere at around 60 not sure what's the render resolution but overall very good experience so yeah um all in all for the gaming performance of the new samsung galaxy s24 ultra it's pretty good, but like what I found out with the ROG Phone 8 series of smartphones, uh, the Snapdragon 8 Gen 3, when you're gonna push it further to get more performance, you can because they do allow that in this generation, but the efficiency at higher performance is just not good on the Snapdragon 8 Gen 3. And yeah, that is why on games like Genshin Impact, if we're gonna push this chipset to its absolute maximum, high render resolution, high power, then it's gonna thermal throttle. And the thermal limit of the S24 Ultra, I think is a bit too low, only at about 43 degrees Celsius, that's the max that we can get, which I think we can still push it to somewhere around, let's just say 45, even 48 or 50 degrees Celsius, I would still say it's fine. It's just that a lot of people will complain because it will start to toast your fingers a little bit. So yeah, 
That's the gaming performance of the Galaxy S24 Ultra. The gaming test for the Galaxy S24 Plus and the Galaxy S24 will come in a few days time but overall I'm very impressed by the performance of the Galaxy S24 Ultra. Realistically speaking though no one is going to push the render resolution to its absolute maximum as in this option right here. Most people would not even touch this option so you're going to play it in the default render resolution which is not going to have any sort of frame rate issue or thermal throttle. So yeah, most people are not going to use this option. And yeah, that, that's all that we have to share with you in this video here. If you have any questions or any weird ideas that you want us to try with the Galaxy S24 Ultra, then do leave them down in the comment section below. I'll be happy to go through all of your comments. And also, if you have any other questions regarding this phone, leave them down in the comment section below. Remember to hit the like and subscribe button while you're on your way there and we'll see you guys in the next video. Uh, this video recording is 1 hour and 45 minutes and I have to edit this right now. And uh, yeah, we'll see you guys in the next video. Goodbye.